tips for a tighter low end. That is what we're going to be talking about today. Before we jump into the mix, what we need to do is consider the room that we're working in. So for me, when I moved into this space, knowing that it was a smaller room and that my speakers were going to be close to some corners, straight away jumped online, went and bought some bass traps and I've got bass traps, floor to the roof, panels on the walls and behind my speakers and the walls behind me, got a couch, got a rug. All this stuff adds to dampening the space so that we're not being affected by the reverberations in our space. Now let's dive into this track and I'll show you some techniques that I use to try and make sure that my low end stays tight. Let's lay a mattress on the balcony. So pretty sweet pop rock kind of tune. We've got big drums, bass, there's an acoustic guitar tucked in there, electric guitars and vocals. So not overly complex with the elements that we're using, but let's have a look at some ways we can treat these instruments and make sure the low end stays tight. So for most stuff like guitars, vocals, we're going to want to use a high pass filter to get rid of any low end information that's not really necessary, especially when we consider that we've got the kick and the bass in the low end that we don't want to be cluttering up that space. So for example, let's have a look at our vocals. So the first plugin on the vocals here is just an EQ and we've got a high pass filter at about 92 hertz. You've got to find that sweet spot where the vocals don't lose any information, but you're cutting out as much low end rumble as you can. And then we treat all the other vocals, doubles, harmonies in a similar fashion. Now let's have a look on my lead guitar bus here. We've got a high pass filter all the way up to 150 hertz. There's nothing below that point that's really important here. And we're just rolling that away, leaving more space for our bass guitar and our kick drum. So let's have a quick look at our rhythm guitars here. We've got a high pass filter set to 100 hertz here, roughly. And that sounds great, nice and tight. Let's have a look at our acoustic guitar. And again, about 100 hertz high pass filter here. And even here on the EQ section, we've got a shelf set to 100 hertz and we're pulling down about six, seven dB here. Now, acoustic guitars are pretty notorious for having a healthy amount of low end in them, especially depending on your mic placement and what type of mics you're using. When I was mixing this, I found the guitar was a bit too bassy and probably cluttering the low end and getting in the way of the bass. So it's much cleaner, brighter, um, on its own, not super pretty, but in the mix, it actually works really well. So we've made enough space now with the high pass filter of all the other instruments and the sounds for the bass and the kick to find their spot in that low end. But let's have a look at our kick. So we've got a subby rock kick kind of going on here. Let's have a listen to what this sounded like before any processing. So big change to the sound here, mostly just doing some expanding in this SSL plugin, doing a lot of our shaping in the EQ here. So you can see I've done quite a big boost around 40, 50 Hertz here, just to bring out that sort of subby sound out of this kick because it was sounding a bit mid rangey and just a second EQ later with a broad boost just to bring out a little bit more top end. So what we've done there is we focus the kick in that 40 to 60 Hertz area. Now let's have a look at our bass guitar. Now we've got a Ampeg, adding a nice tone to it. Little boost in the mid range here. Tiny little boost with a shelf at 100 hertz. And then cutting some of that low end subbiness from 70 to 80 hertz downwards. And then a little bit of a cut at 200 hertz and then a big cut at 360 hertz. So just taking out some of that muddy mid range. That's actually where a bulk of the guitars and a lot of the vocals are sitting. So the bass is getting most of its focus around 
80 to 200 hertz, this little bump here. So in a sense, we've carved away a bit of the area where the kick's sitting, and we've carved away a bit of the area where the guitar's sitting, and now we're letting the bass have its own little spot of focus in that upper low end. Now, after that, I also have a compressor set up to do a little bit of side chain compression to the kick. Now I'm using FabFilter Pro and B, and I'm only side chaining to this subby region where the kick is sitting. So we're going from 110 hertz downwards. And every time the kick hits, this compresses our bass signal. And that just helps add a little bit extra space for the kick and the bass to kind of live together. And then a really simple thing that people often look over, it's levels. So let's have a listen to everything together now and watch the meters of the buses here and have a look at where the bass is kind of sitting. And I'll turn it on and off and see if you can hear the mix kind of fall apart because it's missing that low end. But even though the bass isn't as loud as like the guitars and the vocals, you'll notice a big difference when the bass gets muted. So let's check it out. Let's lay our mattress on the balcony So as long as you were listening along on a device where you can actually hear the bass, like some headphones that are out of your monitors, if you're watching on your phone and listening out of the phone speakers, you might not have really heard much difference at all just then. But you could hear when the bass was muted, the mix felt really empty. And as soon as I unmuted it, the mix felt full and complete again. But the bass isn't that loud that it's kind of taking up the whole mix. So you have to find that sweet spot between the kick being punchy and clear and the bass adding that fullness to the mix, but it's not intruding into the guitars. So hopefully that makes sense in finding that relationship between all those instruments. A Couple of other little things that we can look at on the actual mix bus. Now I'm sure you've all seen a YouTube video somewhere where someone says, do a high pass filter at 30 Hertz on your master and call it a day. Now that's not always the right thing to do, but however, I do have a high pass filter on this mix and I know there's some people out there who would be screaming at me saying you shouldn't put a high pass filter on a mix you should do a low shelf cut and it just depends if it sounds okay it's fine but if you do use a high pass filter and you feel like there's some weird phase smearing going on then yeah do like a low shelf cut instead but I'm doing it on my SSL Fusion which is just here which you can't see and I have the high pass filter on this set to 40 hertz it's actually pretty subtle what it's doing because we've got such a nice tight low end going already but I felt that it just tightened up that kick sound a little bit more in the overall mix. But if your mix doesn't need a high pass filter, don't put one on just because people say to put one on, make that decision and do it if it feels right and it sounds right to you. Now, one other thing you could do is some multiband compression on your low end in your mix if it's feeling like it still needs tightening up. I have the Wave C6 and I'm just doing a pretty small amount of compression at around 115 Hertz. Now, this is kind of where the kick and the bass and the guitars, all that low end kind of meets in this area. So this can be a real murky area at times for the low end. So I just wanted to make sure that the, the subby low end of the kick and the bass was coming through nice and clear and it wasn't getting too boomy around that 100 hertz region. So it's pretty subtle. We're only doing at a max 3 dBs of gain reduction, but you can see it's never really kind of hitting the bottom. So it's probably only really doing like one to two dBs of gain reduction. And that just tightens our low end up just a little bit more. But I would only use that if you felt you needed it and only put this on when you're done mixing the song. And that's it guys, just a couple of ways on how you can tie up your low end. If there's anything that you like to do to get a tight low end, drop it in the comments below and let me know some processing that you like to do to your mix to get it sounding nice and tight. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Let's lay our mattress on the balcony.